So in this session, we'll look at the model simplification and standardization problem for SCS tier. Uh, we have part of the model equation that relates the composition and temperature where both composition and temperature are changing due to a change in the coolant flow rate okay now you see that we derived this equation for composition where the temperature term was implicit in this k term where k equals k naught exponential negative e over rt i believe you are familiar with this equation from your uh, process uh, kinetics course or the reaction kinetics course so we have in this term both the temperature implicitly and the composition there so and that's coming as multiplication of these two terms in some way so that's the nonlinear appearance. So we need to linearize that term. Now, so when there are two variables, x and y, the truncated Taylor series up to the linear term becomes function of x y equals function of x naught y naught, where x naught y naught are the uh, coordinates around which you are doing the linearization, and that delta f, delta the function of our delta x evaluated at x naught and y naught times x minus x naught plus delta f over delta sorry this is delta f over delta y evaluated at x naught and y naught and y minus y naught okay so for our case let's assume that x equals our t and y is our ca ca is the uh, concentration of the reactant a in this case so it can be any reaction can be taken place and we said that for this particular case we looked at the ethylene oxide plus water reaction formulating the uh, a star okay so a is that of the comp composition of the reactant so x naught for our case is the we'll consider t bar where t bar will consider the initial steady state value the same is the y naught is ca bar C A bar is the initial steady state value. So we talked about when defining the deviational form of the variable. We talked about that always we consider with respect to some initial condition. Okay. For this case, if the process is at initially at a steady state value, we take that to be the initial condition and then build on that how much change happens around that initial steady state value. Now considering this x and y variable to be if we look at this term kca which is written as k naught e to the power negative e over rt ca so if you look at this term so this function here if we take the derivative with respect to t then ca goes out and for e to the power exponential negative e over rt becomes exponential negative e over rt times you see that here t is coming as 1 over t so that will be negative 1 over t squared and then negative e over r goes out there so we have this entire term which can be written as simply you know if you take these two terms together will be positive e over r t squared times exponential e to the power e over r t negative and c a bar okay so that's the partial derivative in, uh, with respect to t for the partial derivative with respect to ca if you take this out so this term will be out and then delta ca over delta ca will be again one so only you have this term and when evaluated at t bar and ca bar we'll have r t bar okay so all of these are evaluated t bar and ca bar so you see here t a bar and ca bar there okay now let's uh put this in the taylor's expansion for this term here so we're taking this entire term now k naught e to the negative e over rt times ca so this term will be function of x naught y naught so k naught e to the power negative uh, exponential e over rt bar ca bar so that's our first term there the second term here is delta over delta x 
evaluator to x dot y naught, which is we get this entire thing here, which I can write it as this put together e over rt squared, and then exponential e over rt ca bar, this rt bar, and then k naught term is there. That coming from here, k naught term. The third term, so it is del f over del y, so it will be something del over del c a, which is exponential negative e over rt, and k naught comes term comes here, and then c a minus y minus y naught equals c a minus c a bar. So we have this three terms there: one, two, three, one, two, and three. So that's the linearization of the nonlinear term. Okay. Now we'll use this notation k naught exponential negative e over rt equals k bar just for simplification okay so that will give us this term is simply nothing but this kca term so kca okay will be k bar ca so this one will be k bar and this one is ca bar but this term remains the same e over rt bar squared this term becomes k naught exponential negative e over rt becomes k bar and this becomes c a bar t minus t bar and this term again becomes k bar c minus c a bar okay so that's exactly the same equation here using this notation in a simplified form now look at the differential equation we are dealing with so if i write this differential equation and replace this nonlinear term by its linear form We'll end up with dc over dt so that's the left hand side f over v c i minus c a there is no change in that we simply instead of kca we plug in all this term here simply it came here this one here and this one here okay the exact terms are used here so just simply a negative kca so the negative values are there okay now at initial at t equals zero we we'll consider this to be a, a like a in all of the cases we'll use the initial condition thing or the initial steady state so every time you should do some try to find some dynamic response the the start time we refer it to t0 or the initial time and if the process initial at steady value we take this to be the initial steady condition now t equals zero if you look at this equation so ca will be at a steady state so if it is a steady state so its derivative is zero so this equation at t equals zero it will be zero and this part becomes f over v c i minus c a bar so that's the initial steady state minus kca it becomes k bar c bar at the initial steady value now if you take this two equation if you subtract the second equation from the first one dca minus so this zero so this is plus this is negative so dca over dt minus zero becomes this you see this term here and this term here they get cancelled out we'll have negative f over v c a minus c a bar c a minus c a bar okay now these two terms they are the exact same term so they get cancelled out so we have now this term here negative e to the rt square k bar c a bar t minus t a and exactly this term over here okay now we'll do a simple little rearrangement here you see this c a minus c a bar and this again c a minus c a bar so this is negative this is negative so we take both on the left hand side both will be positive so positive f over v plus k times c a minus c a bar and this term remains on the right hand side negative e to the r t bar squared k bar c bar t minus t bar so at this point we use the notation of the deviational form of the variable but you said that c a minus c a bar it's even as c a prime don't confuse it with derivative when you'll be using prime from now on it will refer to the deviational form of the variable so defining ca minus ca bar so the current condition you know how far is it away from the initial steady state that's the deviational form so ca minus ca bar is denoted by ca prime the same with t minus t bar denoted by t 
prime. Also, you use the standard notation just to rearrange this. Take this here. So, dividing entirely by this term, we'll have tau dCa. So, if you take this, you know, divided by 1 over this term here, that will be tau dCa prime over dt. Now, look at this dCa and dCa prime are the same because, you know, uh, we'll have, if we have Ca minus Ca bar, that's uh, dCa bar over dt, that's a 0. So, dCa, dCa prime, the same thing. And this term will be Ca prime t here. And this term, if I divide it by this term again, it becomes something K, capital K. That's not the small k here. Don't confuse with this. So, we'll use the common notation K on the right side. We'll see why later. So, K and t prime t. So, that's the standard form of the equation that we'll be using. So, for our case, tau becomes 1 over. So, if we divide by the entire term, so 1 over f over v plus k bar. And then k becomes negative e to r t square k bar c a bar f over v plus k bar. Okay. Now, one thing, uh, just uh, some sort of validation for the step 5. So, this is the end of step 4 where you get the equation in a simplified and a standard form. What simplification is applied here is the linearization that all the nonlinear term is linearized. Okay. And then the standardization is to express this equation in this form, this being tau, this being 1 and this being another notation k. Here tau is 1 over this term and k is uh, negative e yeah, over rt square k c over fb plus f over b plus k. Now step 5 will be the validation part where it, it involves the solution of this equation and we will see how to solve it. Just as a quick note here, we see that uh, from the sign of this uh, term, we can get some sort of validation. In that k, all these terms here are positive. So, this k is negative here. What does it tell that with the increase in, with the changes temperature, if the temperature changes, the reaction rate will be more. So, the concentration of Ca will decrease because this is the reactant. Okay. So, there is some sort of quanti qualitative validation. We can see here that what's the sign of K will tell you from this equation. We will later see when you do the solution that sign of K will tell you what's the relation between these two variables. So, here you see that with increase in T, the Ca will decrease. Simply because that's the reactant. With increase in T, reaction rate goes up. And that will make the uh, composition of the reactant to be less, to decrease. Okay. So, in the next step, we will see how to solve this equation.